Hands on deck for Don Winslow. Stand by for action. Stand by for adventure. Stand by for Don Winslow of the Navy by the makers of delicious post toasties. Yes, shipmates, Don Winslow is on the air bringing you the exciting adventures of the naval intelligence officers who fight against spies and saboteurs behind the lines so our great Navy can battle the enemy on the front lines. And now, shipmates, Commander Winslow's good friend and fellow officer is coming aboard. Here he is, Lieutenant Red Pennington. Hello, fellas and girls. It's sure great to be back. Boy, it seems like we've been away a long time. But now we're all set for action again. And seriously, shipmates... This time, it's worldwide action, and it affects every one of us. You know, there are three great fronts in this war. Yes, three. The soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coast Guard, and Air Corps who man the battle stations are the first front. The second front is the factories and farms turning out the weapons and food for our fighting men. And the third front, shipmates, is the home front. In a couple of days, we're going to enlist your help on this important battle line. So be on hand for official orders from Commander Winslow. Be ready, willing, and able to do your share. I'm sure all our friends will have deck stripped for action, Lieutenant Pennington. And meanwhile, fellows and girls, remember this. You'll be able to do a better job if you're in first-class shape. And one good way to help yourself stay tip-top is to follow Don Winslow's own advice. Commander Winslow says... Get plenty of rest, out-of-door exercise, and eat good, nourishing food at every meal. Let me take over there, George. Food is right down my alley. And when it comes to breakfast, string along with me and pour yourself a big bowl full of crisp, delicious post-toasties. There's a dish for you. Boy, are they good. And good for you, too. Right, Red. So, fellows and girls, treat yourself to a big helping of delicious post-toasties tomorrow morning. Find out with Red what a smackin' good dish they make. Post-toasties taste good. They're good for you. Ask your mother to get a package of post-toasties today. And now, shipmates, all hands on deck for our story. Don and Red are heading for a new assignment. As yet, they have not received their fighting orders. They were just recalled from shore leave and placed aboard a Navy PBY patrol bomber bound for a secret rendezvous somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. While on the way, their giant plane receives the dreaded SSS signal from a large cargo liner, the Redlands. That signal means submarine attack. They turn back to go to the liner's aid. They spot the submarine and roar down to the attack. The bombardier sights presses the trigger on the release cable, and two bombs drop swiftly to the target. Don, we got it. That sub is cold pig iron now. What a plane, what a crew. It was a direct hit. Yippee! Hey. Hey, what's the matter? Why so glum? We got it, don't you understand? Yes, I know, Red. But there was something very strange about that submarine that I don't like. What do you mean, strange? It's just a mess of scrap iron now. You don't have to worry about that one anymore. Not so sure, Red. Well, for Pete's sake, what are you getting at? Did you notice the size of it? No, I can't say that I did. What about the size? It was too small. Too small? Say, are you kidding? No, no, I'm not. When I first saw the shadow under the water, I thought it might be caused by surface distortion. Uh But when those bombs hit and blew it half out of the water, I was sure. That sub was too small, Red. Say, what do you expect them to do? Build the subs in standard size for you? Uh, It was big enough to torpedo the Redlands. That's just it. There was something more behind the sinking of this one ship, I'm sure. I don't know. You're going way over my head. Bombardier to pilot. Bombardier to pilot. Hold it a minute, Red. Pilot, go ahead. Just spotted a man in the water. Looks like a survivor from the Redlands. He's drifting away from the lifeboats. He'll be lost altogether if we don't signal them to pick him up. Pilot, Roger. I'll go down and signal by blinker. They'll reach him. Okay. He's drifting away on a line from the Redlands to the wreckage of that sub. Right. I've got it. Say, nice egg land. Thanks for the swell run. (laughs) Pilot to radio. Winslow to pilot. Winslow to pilot. Yes, Commander. I'd like you to go down and pick up that man yourself. 
I want to speak to him, and I want to get a closer look at the records of that submarine. We're behind schedule now, sir. I was ordered to get you to the Admiral by six hours. If we go down, we'll be way off. I'll take the responsibility, Lieutenant. This is important. Right, sir. Anything you say. Pilot to all crew. Stand by landing stations. Bombardier at forward hatch. Prepare to pick up survivor. Bombardier, Roger. Come on, Red. We'll go forward. But what's this all about? The lifeboats could have picked up that fella just as easily. And what do you want to look at that wreckage for? I'll explain it on the way to forward hatch. We're late for our meeting with the Admiral now, and I can't take too much time with his stop, Red. Okay, you better lead on. I'd probably put my foot through the bomb bay. Here, up this companionway. Hey, they better make these compartment doors wider if they expect me to do a lot of traveling on PBYs. <laughs> this is the pilot's office. How are we doing, Lieutenant? We'll be down in a minute, sir. Good. I won't hold you up very long. Uh, down here to the forward hatch? Right. Ensign Harvey, the bombardier, will be there to help you out. Thanks. Come on, Red. I'm right behind you. But, Don, you still haven't explained why you want to look at the wreckage of the sub. The debris will tell me if I'm right or wrong about the size. I still don't see what's so important about it being small. You will soon enough. Right up here, sir. Thanks. You're Ensign Harvey? That's right. Nice bombing on that sub. No, the setup was perfect. I couldn't rest. Here, I'll open the hatch and prepare to pick up that survivor. Thanks. Hang on to this line, Red. Be ready to throw it the minute we come up to the fellow, right? Look out for your head. I'm opening the hatch. Okay. We're landing. Hang on. Oh, seeing that water come up at me like that turned my insides upside down. Okay, Red. Ready with that line. Help. All right. Take it easy. We see you. Grab the line when we throw it. Don't worry. We'll get you. Okay, Red. Heave. Hey. Good shot. Hey, he's got it. All right, now pull in. Here, yeah, I'll give you a hand, Lieutenant Pennington. Thanks. Hang on there. Keep coming on that line. Ensign Harvey, you better hold on to my legs. I'll reach over and grab him. Yes, sir. All right, now. Easy. Here we go. All right, come on. Let go of that line and grab my hands. All right. I got you. All right. Pull me in up there. All right, sir. Hey, you. Don't you talk about my tonnage again. All right, grab it. Got it. Now you're okay now. I, I don't know how to thank you, man. Easy, boy. I'd have been a goner, sure, if you hadn't come down. Uh, here, you're freezing. <sighs> Better get back into the cabin. Wait, wait a minute. My name is Driscoll. I, I was chief mate on the Redlands. Tell me, did you get that sub? Yep, smacked her right on the butt. She won't be doing any more dirty work. Good. I feel better already. Ensign Harvey, better take Driscoll into the cabin. Give him something hot and wrap blankets around him. We'll take over here. All right, sir. <laughs> All right, Lieutenant. Taxi over to that wreckage, will you? Yes, sir. How you're going to find anything out of that mess beats me, Don. Those bombs made mincemeat out of that sub. Just so long as I can pick up a lead. I don't care how small the pieces are. As far as I'm concerned, the smaller the better. Easy, Lieutenant. Throttle down. This far enough. Right, sir. Well, there it is, Don. Take a good look. Yes. Not very much left, is there? About the best you could do with that stuff would be to cut it down for toothpicks. Hey. Hey, look what's floating out from under that chunk of cork. Hmm? It's white? It's... Yes. Sailor's cap. And just make out the insignia. Yeah, it must have been part of the insulation on the hull. What about it? Well, you look at the size of it. Is that still biting you? What's a hunk of cork insulation got to do with the size of the sub? Now, listen, Red. That stuff lines up the hull to keep the moisture out of the boat, right? Yeah. And that piece out there is practically semicircular in shape. Well, add another half to it and you'd have the full size of the hull. That's right. Have you ever seen a hull cross-section that small? Why, hmm? yes, Don. In naval intelligence plans of the two-man subs. Exactly. Commander Winslow. Yes, Lieutenant. Wind's freshening, sir. If we don't get started soon, I won't be able to land when we reach the Admiral. All right, you can take off now. I've found what I was looking for. Right. Come on, Red. Let's see what Driscoll can tell us. Well, Driscoll, 
How's it going? It's just fine, sir. I got that cold Pacific chill out of my bones. Ah, swell. Now, do you think you can answer a few questions for us? Sure. Be glad to tell you anything I know. Now, according to that signal we received when we passed you, the Redland shipped from Los Angeles and was due to join a convoy. That's right. We sailed under sealed naval orders from the convoy command. I see. What did those orders say? Oh, they gave us our course to the convoy and our rendezvous time. Anything else? No. From there on, we'd be under orders from Admiral Colby. Tell me, Driscoll, how many of you on board the Redlands knew what was in those orders? Only the captain's first officers. They were kept very secret. We weren't even allowed to open them until we'd been out of port for an hour. You're sure that nobody knew your course until you opened the orders? Positive. I was in the captain's cabin when he read them. The envelope was sealed tight. What are you getting at, Don? You'll see in a minute, Red. Now, Driscoll, were you traveling on one of the regular sea lanes? No, sir, we weren't. The Redlands was carrying important cargo. That's why the convoy command gave us those sealed orders, I guess. Yes, to cut down the chance of being torpedoed by subs that would wait on the regular transport routes. Do you think that sub was waiting for the Redlands? Absolutely. Now, look at the torpedoing in the light of what we just discovered in the wreckage, Red. That was a small two-man sub. A two-man sub in these waters? Right. Those subs are sent out on quick raids. They haven't the fuel capacity to range these waters looking for stray ships. So, obviously, it must have been waiting for the Redlands. Holy cow, you're right, Don. It was part of a prearranged scheme. The enemy is getting secret information which is liable to destroy the whole convoy command. Well, Don has discovered something really important. Will this startling deduction have any bearing on their secret mission for Admiral Colby? Yes, Don has discovered a piece of information that's really important. And here's some important information for you. Fellows and girls, post-toasties stay crisp longer in milk. Why is that important? Because everybody goes for real crispness in a cereal. And that's exactly what you get with post-toasties. Yes, and it's a proven fact, too. Because in a nationwide crispness test, it was shown that post-toasties actually stayed crisp longer in milk than other cornflakes tested. But discover this extra crispness for yourselves, shipmates. At breakfast tomorrow, try a big bowl full of delicious post-toasties with milk and fruit. You'll be enjoying a breakfast dish that Don Winslow himself says is tops for taste. Ask your mother for a package of crisp, delicious post-toasties today. Fellows and girls, be sure to be with us every day to keep pace with the adventures of Don and his friend, Red Pennington, as they track down the dangerous enemies of our beloved country. Tomorrow, Don and Red receive special secret orders from Admiral Colby that will plunge them into one of the most thrilling adventures of their entire careers. You'll hear all about it tomorrow. Same time, same station, same call to action. All hands on deck for Don Winslow. Don Winslow of the Navy is presented Mondays through Fridays by the makers of Nourishing Post Toasties, the delicious cornflakes that stay crisp longer in milk. This program has come to you from New York. This is the Blue Network. Stand by for adventure. Stand by for Don Winslow of the Navy, brought to you Monday through Friday each week by the makers of delicious Post Toasties. Listen, shipmates. Listen to the voices of Uncle Sam's great naval bases. These guns stand ready for battle. San Diego. Guantanamo Bay. Panama. And now, here's Lieutenant Pennington to tell us more about them. Yes, shipmates, these and many more strategically located bases stand ready to equip the fleet, to keep them afloat. They're doing the very important job of servicing the ships of Uncle Sam's Navy, maintaining its striking power, pushing the battle to the enemy's front door. The more efficient the bases, the more effective the fleet. And speaking about bases... You fellows and girls have your own private base right at home. I mean, of course, your breakfast table. Because right there, you take on a supply of nourishment to carry you through a busy morning with flying colors. 
How about that, Paul Luther? Right, Lieutenant Pennington. And that's why Commander Winslow urges you fellows and girls to eat a good, nourishing breakfast that includes delicious post-toasties. Post-toasties are rich in the food energy you need to help yourself be a winner. You know, every serving of crispy post-toasties gives you valuable whole grain nourishment. Nourishment you ought to have every day to really keep in A1 shape. Important vitamin B1 is included, and that's really the nerve and energy vitamins we all need daily. And one mighty good place to get a generous start on your daily needs of vitamin B1 is by enjoying a heaping bowl full of delicious post-toasties with milk or cream and maybe some fruit on top. You've got something there, Paul. But don't forget, post-toasties are really swell eating. You said it, Red. And so, fellows and girls, tomorrow morning, treat yourself to a big bowl full of delicious post-toasties. They taste good, they're good for you. Ask your mother right now to get a big package of delicious post-toasties. All hands on deck! Yes, shipmates, all hands on deck for our story. Don and Red have received their orders from Admiral Warburton. Base H, one of the most important naval stations in the Pacific Ocean Island Defense Ring, is being threatened by a mysterious attack. Now, in our last episode, our friends learned that a new weapon had been developed by Dr. Franz Wolf and was being put to use by the enemy. It is the Blitzfan, a tiny plane only two feet long, controlled by radio, and able to carry a large and very deadly charge of explosives. The enemy is preparing to strike. We now join our friends as they are in a Navy scout bomber high over the Pacific, speeding to Sango Cay. Say, Don, how far out are we? We left San Diego about six hours ago. We should reach Base H in two hours. They read this ship really performs. Yeah, they really put together some swell planes for the Navy, don't they, Don? This Douglas Devastator is one of the best dive bombers in the world. You said it, fella. And it proved its worth in the Battle of Midway. And our attacks on the bases in the Marshall Islands. In these ships, our flyers dive bomb the dickens out of the enemy. Remember our old Curtis Hell Divers, Don? Yeah. They were the first planes built for that kind of work. And these Douglas Scout bombers pick up where they leave off. They were one of the main reasons we knocked out Ford Carriers at Midway. Oh, gosh, would I like to spot one of those flat tops now? We'd really give them a massage. Save your energy, Red. You're going to need it when we get to San Cay. Our work is really cut out for us this time. Yeah, did you get that map of the island from the Admiral? Oh, yeah. It's in that side pocket if you want to look at it. Thanks. But gosh, when you think of all the water around Songo Cay and that the two-man subs could be anywhere in the ocean ready to send out those blitz fans, what a headache. Yes, it is, Red. But not quite as big as you're making it. Oh, no? No. Von Koloff has sure thought of everything. Using the submarines, the Blitz fans can come from half a dozen different directions. I know, but there's one flaw in his plan, Red. I think we can get him through that. What do you mean? The small two-man subs. Say, I know what you're getting at. The short cruising range. Right. The same fact that tipped his hand when he was working against the convoy command. Those two-man subs must have a base nearby. Wait a minute. Let me check the map again. No, I don't think you'll find it there, Red. Mm, No, you're right. I thought maybe there'd be another island somewhere in striking range of the base. Red, do you remember those names on that piece of paper? Sure. How could I forget them? And we've got them all pretty well explained now, haven't we? Well, most of them. Let's see. There was Von Koloff. Check. Right. El Cardin. Check. Mm Mm-hmm. Sango K. Check. Yep. Hey, a ship. Couldn't that be what we're looking for? A base for the two-man subs? That's what I was driving at, Red. Must be the refueling station. Yeah. And again, Admiral Warburton said the transmitter for the Blitz fans is too big to be carried in the submarines, so it must be installed on the ship. But how would that work? Well, it's only a guess, Red. But the subs probably take up their position somewhere near the island. Mm-hmm. And then all they do is prepare the Blitz fans for launching in that device we saw on the wreck. And the transmitter takes over from there. Wow, that's some setup. But how the heck are we going to find it? Just because we've boiled down everything to one place doesn't make it any easier to find. The ocean is still just as big. Von Koloff is dangerous, Red. He'll have agents on shore to spy on the base. The fact that the two unexploded blitz fans were found on the island makes me positive this first attack was really a test. And there must be some men on the islands observing the results of the flight and making corrections on the range and course. Skipper, you sound awfully positive. It'd be a shame if you had to eat those words. Red sounds very pessimistic. 
But deep in his heart, he realizes that Don's theory is logical, and he's prepared to go anywhere and fight anything under his buddy's leadership. Meanwhile, on the island of Songo Cay, a message is being flashed out to sea. It is being picked up by our friend's mortal enemy, the spy chief Von Koloff. This is Joseph reporting, Herr Von Koloff, from position three, Song O.K. Yeah, go ahead, Joseph. Did the Blitz fans reach the island successfully? Yes, they did. They came down in the jungle outside of base H. Good. Then the test was a success? Yes, Herr Von Koloff. But a patrol of American sailors stumbled across the machines before we could reach them. They reported to Commander McLaughlin. Couldn't you stop them, you dumb cop? No, they were too many for us. However, we did manage to recapture the flying machines. They very stupidly left only one sailor on guard. It was simple to dispose of him and remove them. I shall leave the Corasabo in the F-092. Take the Blitz fans to the beach on the east side of the island, our usual meeting place. Wait there for me and take care not to be discovered. The recognition signal will be the same? Yes. I shall arrive sometime around midnight. Do not fail to be there. You can rely on me, Herr Van Koloff. Another thing. We have launched another Blitz fan. This time with a full load of explosives. Be prepared to give me a full report on the result. It shall be done. Signing off. Ah. This will be the greatest success of my life. Those stupid fools, Winslow and Pennington, thinking they could stop me. <laughs> the destruction of Base H will show them. Say, those two hours are almost up, Don. Mm -hmm. Aren't we getting near the base? We should be. Sun's going down. It'll be dark in a few minutes. I don't like landing on an unfamiliar field at night. Oh, oh go on. You're one of the best pilots in the service. You could land this ship blindfolded. Oh, wait a minute. I think we've got it, Red. Now, look ahead. Isn't that a shoreline just coming up on the horizon? Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. That's it. It's outlined in the setting sun. That's some navigating fella. You've hit it right on the button. Boy, I'm glad of that. The fuel gauge is starting to flirt around the empty mark. Hey, Don, did you see that? Oh, what? Just off to the left of the island, something in the air. It flashed a minute in the sun. There it goes again. Hmm? Yeah, I got it, Red. That's strange. It isn't a plane. Well, what do you suppose it is? Only one way to find out. Hang on. There it is again. We're coming right up to it. Don't lose it. Okay. Level off. We're right over it. Whoa, well, will you look at that? Brett, look at that size. And the stubby wings. And those wires. That's a blitz fan. It's headed straight for the island, Tom. You've got to stop it. Open up your cockpit cover and get ready to use your machine guns. I'll grab some altitude. Right. Red, when we get into position, I'll dive straight at it and open up with the forward guns. You pick up with your rear guns as we go by. Okay, but for Pete's sake, be careful, Don. The explosives in that darn thing will have a terrific spread. Now, this is high enough. Stand by, Red. We're going down. Let her rip. I'm on the range. Here goes. No luck. Pick it up, Red. Yippee! Look out, Don. Hold on. Don't lose control. The elevators and the rudder don't answer. Wow, they've been ripped to pieces. We're going down. Hang on. We're too low to jump. Well, shipmates, Don and Red are certainly in a tight spot. The concussion of the exploding blitz fan has wrecked their tail controls and they are too low to use their parachutes. How can they get down safely? Shipmates, you want to be ready, willing, and able to give your best. So make up your mind right now to follow the sensible rules we've told you about. Get lots of sleep, out-of-door exercise, and eat good, nourishing food. At breakfast, Don Winslow says Post Toasties are his own special favorite because Post Toasties are swell to eat. And they really stay crisp longer in milk or cream. These delicious flakes are toasted in a special way so that dozens of tiny bubbles of golden goodness pop right out on every delicious flake. And these little bubbles mean that Post Toasties are extra crisp. They stay crisp longer in milk or cream. Compare Post Toasties with any ordinary cornflakes and see for yourself the difference. You'll agree that Post Toasties really are crisper and stay crisp longer than any other cornflakes you've ever eaten. Ask your mother for Post Toasties right now. Well, fellows and girls, 
In their new adventure, Don and Red have already come up against the work of the enemy. They have succeeded in destroying a blitz van, but their plane is in desperate trouble. So don't miss next Monday's thrilling episode. Be on deck, same time, same station, same call to action. All hands on deck for Don Winslow. All hands on deck. All hands on deck. Don Winslow of the Navy is presented Mondays through Fridays by the makers of nourishing post toasties, the delicious corn flakes that stay crisp longer in milk. This program came to you from New York. This is the Blue Network.